What's up, everybody? This is part 10 of In-Depth look for Codex Guitari, and this is going to be on the Honor Guard Dune Crawlers, the last unit to talk about. Um, these things, stat line wise, uh, have the same weapon skill, blizzard skill, and strength of the Iron Strider Ballastari specifically. They have front and side armor of 12, rear armor of 11. Their initiative is 2, they got 1 attack, and they have 3 hull points. They are a vehicle, of course, and they are the walker type and you get one of them to start off with. These things can be turned into a squadron and I'll get into that uh, in a little bit. So baseline war gear is eradication beamer, broad spectrum data tether, Emanatus force field, and searchlight. Options, you can include up to two additional dune crawlers giving you a total squadron size of three. And then any model may replace its eradication beamer with one of the following. Twin linked heavy phosphor blaster or neutron laser and cognis heavy stubber or the Icarus array. And any models may take items from the Skitari vehicle equipment list, which is Cognis Heavy Stubber, Smoke Launchers, Mind Scanner Probe, and Cognis Manipulator. If you have the Icarus Array, you cannot take Smoke Launchers. Now, um, as far as special rules, they also benefit from Doctrinal Imperatives, which is always nice. They have the Crawler Special Rule. Basically, a model with this special rule is never slowed down by difficult terrain and automatically passes dangerous terrain tests, but they cannot run. A nice trade-off, in my opinion. And you have field harmonics. A model with this special rule adds one to any invulnerable saving throws it makes for its Emanatus force field for each other model from the same squadron within four inches. So a full squadron size of three, all within range of each other, have a four plus invulnerability save from the Emanatus force field. Now, when I was talking about the force field in the War Gear Part 2, I n knew about field harmonics. But I still feel, because of how exclusive it is, only on the Doom Crawler, um, that if they made it have a base of 5 plus to start off with, it would have been fine and wouldn't really raise too much havoc. Sure, you would get a 3 plus invulnerability save then, which of course is better than a 4 plus, but it doesn't break the game and um, it would just make them feel a bit more special and such because you know it is so exclusive only the doom crawlers have it but it's fine as is i just figured maybe make it a little bit more um special since it's so exclusive but i'm not saying it's worthless it's definitely fine as is so with that being said the fluff of the doom crawlers they started off as um what was called a mule which is mars universal land engine and they probably still have mules <laughs> on mars and maybe other forge rules, but the mules were so successful that they were basically um, rebuilt as a weapon of war and given the Abnatus force field. So um, basically it started off as a utilitarian walker vehicle and then Mars went, let's put a gun on it essentially and make it a weapon of war and then give it a force field. So I kind of like that. Um, it needs two crew. It has a Skitari Ranger to be the gunner and has Skitari Vanguard to be the driver. And because the Vanguard are resilient to harmful energies, they're able to immerse themselves into an electro-amniotic tank so that allows direct communication with the Honor Guard Machine Spirit, essentially mind-melding with the Machine Spirit. That's why the Vanguard are chosen, because of the harmful energies of the electro-amniotic fluid. Um, that lets them be in direct communion with the um, the machine spirit, but it burns them out, kind of like a battery. And once they're used up, you pluck the old Vanguard out, put the new Vanguard in, and you're good to go. So I find that interesting. I like that. Now, uh, because of the fact that they're popular, successful amongst the Mechanicum and the Skatari, this is their main battle tank. This is the equivalent of the Predator or the Limon Rust or something like that. This is what the Skatari have as their main battle vehicle. Now the Doom Crawlers, when they're on the battlefield, they're of course decimating the enemy and achieving whatever they got to achieve for victory. But they're also able to channel and send great amount of battlefield information to the tech priest in space. Now every Skitara unit has a data tether, Wi-Fi essentially, to do so. But the Doom Crawler is able to get a whole bunch of information all at once up to the tech priests. You could say that they're just able to to transmit data via Wi-Fi a whole lot better than everybody else in the Skitari. 
it is a bigger complex machine so that kind of makes sense uh, I like that I like that not only are they a weapon of war but they're also able to transmit the data much more effectively to the tech priest in space um, just something kind of, kind of cool to me and they're doing this while fighting against the enemy while wading through toxic uh, waters or you know scampering over tank traps and smashing their way over and through um, ruins and other terrain without you know breaking the stride without skipping a beat it's pretty cool I like that all of that is together in this dune crawler so I think you know as the fluff kind of makes them sound and I think as the unit entry is these would definitely uh, be a mainstay in most all Skitaria lists you're gonna see I, I see almost really no reason not to have uh, these things I think any Skitaria list could benefit from having a Doom Caller be it by itself or a full squadron or multiple squadrons that would be up to you but I think they definitely have a nice battlefield role and um, Iron Strider Ballastari are cool and they share the same heavy support slot as the Doom Callers and um, you could go with both but I, de I would say it, it really depends on your play style but the Doom Crawler can always fit in and I think part of that is because it has a really powerful anti-aircraft Icarus array and for me personally that's how I would upgrade at least you know if I'm only gonna have one squadron of Doom Crawlers, it's gonna be an Icarus Array Doom Crawler squadron. That's for sure. Now, baseline, the eradication beamer, it's okay. Its maximum range is 36 inches, but it's the reverse of a conversion beamer in terms of how it works. So you have to get closer. The closer you are to the enemy, the stronger the eradication beamer is in terms of stat line. It goes from large blast to blast to not being a blast weapon, but its strength gets bigger. So it is a bit of a trade-off. I guess it's a bit more um, universal in the fact that it depends on what you're shooting at. You can stay at longer range and shoot against infantry with your nice large blast. You can get a bit closer to shoot at heavy infantry with just a blast. Or you can get really close and blow up vehicles. So it has some versatility in there. It's just that you have to get real close to, to be effective like that. And um, the closer you are the easier it is for the enemy to counter charge you with anti-vehicle uh, melee tactics or hit you with things like Melta and be really effective against you that way. So it's a trade-off. It's not bad, um, but it's a trade-off. Now, the Twin Linked Heavy Phosphor Blaster has 36-inch range, but it has a better strength and AP and fires multiple shots, but it's not a blast weapon. So it's a trade-off. If you wanted to have that mid-range running gun power combined with the um, the good armor piercing capability for heavy infantry you would go with the heavy phosphor blaster I'm not the biggest fan of the heavy phosphor blaster to be honest for me it would be the neutron laser and cognitive heavy stuffer or the Icarus array with the Icarus array taking priority I just feel with something like this you know they're nice they're meant to me what they mean to me, I should say, is fire support, which you can do at any range, really, as long as the rest of your force is there to make use of that fire support. But I like the longer range of the neutron laser as opposed to the uh, mid-range heavy phosphor blaster, and even more so in the case of the eradication beam, where you have to get really close range to have the high strength that the uh, neutron laser has. I just think that long range punch with the neutron laser is pretty nice. A squadron of those guys, yeah, it's kind of points heavy, but not too bad to be honest. Um, I think they could draw enemy fire as well as be pretty effective. Same thing with the Icarus Array. And for me, the first choice would be Icarus Array. And if I were to have a second squadron, it would probably have the neutron laser. But that all depends. You know, as you build your list, you may see, hey, you know what? The heavy phosphor blaster fits in better. I'm actually going to go with that. So you never really know until you start building your list and tweaking it, but the Icarus Array is just such a cool um, anti-aircraft potential. I mean, that makes them, in my opinion, one of the strongest uh, anti-aircraft land units. I mean, you have the Daedalus Missile Launcher, the Gatling Rocket Launcher, and the Twin Icarus Auto Cannon, all of which are Skyfire, all of which can just decimate um, aircraft. So. 
I'm not saying you're going to encounter aircraft every time you play. I'm not saying that aircraft are in their, you know, boatloads in terms of lists out there. But I don't really utilize aircraft. I don't really like them too much. They don't. F they just don't fit well for me. But um, being that these these Qatari don't have an aircraft unit, an Icarus array is definitely a good way to make up for it. So that's why I I really think the Icarus array is one of the better options that way. But it's a case of no aircraft. Well, now what do we do? Well, you have the 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 auto the twin auto cannon thing, but still, uh, it is a bit of a letdown if you don't have the uh, the aircraft to blast out of the sky. But this vehicle platform, I think, is a very good anti-aircraft platform, as I stated at nauseum. And you do have options here. You have the more versatile eradication beamer, standard to keep points low if you like that weapon a lot. You have the heavy phosphor blaster, which can combo nicely with things like Sidonian Dragoons and whatnot, and um, other stuff. And then you have the neutron laser to just hang back and blast things to pieces. And of course, like I mentioned, the Icarus array to shoot things out of the sky. So a very versatile vehicle depending upon how you equip it. At least, I feel so. Anyways, that's it for the Onager Doom Crawler, and that's it for all of the unit entries. I'm not going over the formations. I said that before. But that's really it for the uh, for the codex. So what's going to be next is a wrap-up. I'm going to go over some things in a wrap-up, give you my final thoughts on the codex, and then we'll go from there. So uh, we're almost done. Thanks for hanging through and sticking with it. And hopefully you've enjoyed. So until next time...